Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're gonna to be going over the model of the neuron that we find in our lab. So here, this neuron model is standard neuron model and we're just gonna label all the different parts on it right now. So just starting out up here, we have the region, it's called the cell body. Uh, just so, just pointing to the general area. So this is the nucleus of the cell body, but this is the cell body itself then. So here, cell body. Also sometimes this is known as the uh, soma, S-O-M-A. You hear those come hand in hand. Or So cell body, soma, nucleus, nuclear envelope, that's what that is. So that's where the DNA is. Then the other parts we have here are these little stained granules. There's also one down here. So actually, I'm going to draw this one over here a little bit to combine these, because there's one, and then there it's pointing to another one. These are little dark pigments. These pigments are actually rough endoplasmic reticulum, so they're studded with ribosomes, and they're making proteins. These are called nissel bodies. So nissel bodies are what those ones are. Next, we have these little appendages coming in, these little uh, red, pink spots right here. So I'll just point to two. These are axon terminals. So axon terminals, these are other cells coming in. And if we were looking right here, it's actually a cross section of one. And in the bottom of that one, you can actually see vesicles which are packed with neurotransmitter. That's a little hard to see on this video though right now. All right. so. The other parts that we have here are these little extensions coming out that are communicating with all these axon terminals. Some of these terminals are on the soma itself, and some of these go on to something called a dendrite. So I'll just point to two of them right here. So this is called dendrites. Dendrites are what are communicating with the environment, and most of them are what are receiving the signal. Uh, and then last thing, the label on the cell body region here is we have the axon hillock or hillock right here. Okay, so that is that. Now, one thing I want to note is that the direction the signal is going here. So let's say signals are coming in here, signals are coming in here, and then they're summating in here, forming an action potential. They then go out this way and go out this axon right here. So this is the axon. Then it can to understand this model, understand that this piece right here is connected to that right there. So this is the axon. So we can label that right now. Um, so this right here is the axon. It's also labeled, I think, with a number five right down here on this particular model. So that is the axon, and that signal's going all the way down through here, and then would continue down there through the other end to this um, axon terminal like right up here. It just branches off many, many different times when it gets down there. But now, so what makes up an axon itself? A few important things here. We have this cell right here. This is the nucleus of a Schwann cell. So here I'm just gonna write Schwann cell. Just wanna make sure I spell it right. The so Schwann cell, the nucleus of one, of one, of one. And then remember what a Schwann cell makes. A Schwann cell makes something called Myelin, you could see that wrapped here. So these are two myelin sheaths. Schwann cells produce myelin sheath, and all these little lines here are those myelin sheaths wrapping around each other. So here I'm going to just write myelin sheath. Sorry if you can't read all these words if it's too bright. Uh, next thing we have here, so we labeled the nissel bodies, we have this other little structure that's in here as well. So we have one right there, and we have one right there. This is actually, or these are actually mitochondria. So we need to get the mitochondria, they need to walk down these microtubules, so there's little tracks in here, and these mitochondria need to walk down those microtubules to get to the synaptic terminal, where a lot of energy is used for neurotransmitter release. So these are mitochondria that are sitting in there. And then right here we have a gap. Uh, there's a very important gap between these Schwann cells or between these myelin sheaths. So the, you could call these myelin sheath gaps or you can call them, um, whoops, node of Ranvier. So nodes of Ranvier or myelin sheath gap, either of those work for this one. And then 
the last little structure we have here is this down here. It's just connective tissue. And in this case, uh, this one is called endonerium. Or if you just write connective tissue there, that's fine too. So I just wanted to go over this simple model. I know this was a video, but we only really needed to see this from one angle to, for, to best understand it. So let's just erase that there and just just to show the different angles here I got in this video. This wasn't crazy. I was just going side to side. It's mainly, it can be used as a 2D model, but it, it's good to see the sheath's gap. Like, look at the myelin sheath and how it wraps around cir circularly and the uh, shape of these cell bodies. Now, this is just a generalized example of a neuron. Not all neurons look like this. This would be an example kind of like a multipolar neuron. Uh, so as we go through here then, uh, you can see the various structures and so forth. So you want to be able to name all these structures. They could all come back up again in your future. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I know this is a short little video going over the neuron. And have a nice day and bye-bye. Thank you.